Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are out working on the Steam Stoker engine, and uh, I'm actually out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture today. I wanted to use the hydraulic press that we have out here. I've got an arbor press in my shop. Doesn't have quite the capabilities that uh, this hydraulic press does, and I need to press out a couple of items on this uh, cylinder head. Um, that came off of that stoker engine. So the, they got the two steam cylinders in here with the uh, pistons in them, as well as the two valves. All of these are just kind of stuck in place and we need to get them out so that we can continue on the process of uh, working on, seeing what all has got to be done to get this uh, piece restored. So anyway, I've got it set up. I came out here, brought my little uh, um, engine hoist, was able to get the head over here onto the press and I've got it set up and I've got it set up right now on one of the valves and basically you got a, a rod here that goes into a little cast iron valve that slides up and down inside the head that lets the steam port into the either side of the cylinder and these are stuck they're stuck in there hard so we're going to put some pressure on them and with any luck we're going to get them out let's uh, see what we can do. So I got a 20 ton jack on here. I've got a bigger jack inside if we need it. I'm hoping we don't need it. And um, I'm just gonna do it in hand mode here. This is a air over where you can use air power to, to put pressure on this, but I'm gonna see if I can do it by hand. And I think we broke that one loose and it's coming on out. So let's push this one out. Here's part of it. I'll have to reset that. See, let me get a uh, piece to push down on top of that. Just using that as a push rod to push it on down. And it's moving pretty easily in here now. I think these are just kind of stuck in place. Once you get them moving, there's a bunch of rust and stuff coming out of the bottom down there. There's one of the rings. Man, that thing is full of all kinds of garbage. Let's see if I can get that out now. I'm amazed at all the dirt and grime that's coming out of this thing as it pushes out. I'm not gonna go down quite as far this time. Maybe I can get that out a little easier. is almost out, but not quite. Get another pusher rod to go behind it. All right, hopefully this last bolt will get it out. Come on, come on, come on. All right, there it comes. And there is the valve. Got a, uh, ring that goes on like that and then that holds the ring in place and there's a nut on the end that I've already taken off so these things were completely full of just dirt and rust and stuff there's a pile of stuff down there on the floor that came out with it but uh, we got it so let's get set up on the next one same process all right number two here same process there it goes. Once you break it loose, it comes out pretty easy. We'll um, go ahead and fight this one out just like we did the other one. So next step here is I need to get the two pistons out of the cylinders and um, I'm gonna press them 
Th this cylinder or this piston is almost at bottom dead center, so I'm gonna actually just press it out the short way. I should have clearance in here for the piston to clear inside. I don't know how much pressure this is gonna take, but hopefully it'll come on out. Yeah, there it comes. Getting tight again. I don't want to drop that piston, so I'm going to get my arm up underneath here where I can hopefully catch it when it comes out. And there it comes. And there's the piston. All right. It's got two rings that are up inside of that. We'll have to figure out how to get those out at some point in time, but not right now. All right, we got the last piston here. And let's see if I can get it to break loose. And I think I'm going to cheat and use the air power here to finish this up. So that's uh Put a spacer in there. All right, continue on here. And there it goes. Ah, I didn't do a good job catching it, but I don't think it hurt anything. All right. We got our depressing work done here. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look at what we got. I'm gonna wait till I get back to the shop to really take a good look at that um, casting. Got better light there. But while I'm out here and got the press going, I wanna push these uh, rods, these uh, piston rods out of the pistons. So these are, are just, it's just a rod that comes through. There's a taper on the other side that kind of pushes it in place, holds it in place. So I'm, these are probably gonna be a little bit stubborn. Let's see if we can get them out. Well, that one came out and there you go. You can see the taper. And uh, we're gonna have to remake these rods. Let's get our other piston. We do the same thing with it. Same drill. Didn't mean to throw that piston on the floor like that, but nothing's broken. And ah, here's the other rod. Very good. I think our job here is done. Well, we're back in the shop now and I've had a chance to take a look at this thing and do a little bit of measuring, do a little bit of studying on it and kind of figuring out a game plan on uh, what we want to do. So, um, First things first, if you look in here, it's probably pretty evident that there is some pitting in these cylinders. And uh, I had seen that already. Now, if you look, you can kind of see a line right here and you may be able to see the one down here in the bottom. That was where the pistons were, were at in this uh, cylinder and where it had set for many years. Basically on the back side of these is in pretty good shape, all things considered. Uh, probably a hone and it would be good to go. However, in the front part of this, uh, the condition is much worse. And basically the, the, the side that has the pitting in it, this was the, the side that was sitting down uh, when, it, when it set and it looks like some water had accumulated in here and it just sat there under conditions and we got some pitting in here. So, uh, you know, what are my options? Uh, gonna have to bore 
these out oversized. Uh, and the real question is, is am I going to be able to get away with just boring it and putting some oversized rings in this thing, or am I going to need to have to sleeve this? So I've got the original specs, and um, it talks about in here the cylinder size and uh, when to use oversized rings, when, when you need to actually uh, put a sleeve in it, etc. So when this thing is new, the, the, the cylinder walls measure seven inches across. And I came in here with a uh, inside micrometer and I measured it back here in the back side uh, where the, it's fairly in fairly good shape. And it's really only about a thousandths over seven inches. And even up here on the front side, I didn't measure where the pitting is, but kind of across it in this direction. And again, it's measuring just about a thou or two over seven inches. So very close to that original dimension. Uh, it looks like that it had very little wear on the cylinder walls when this was in operation. So next question is, is how deep is my pitting and how much metal am I going to have to take out of this thing? Uh, to get it to clean up and probably won't know that until we actually get in there and start boring it But I, I took a dial indicator. This is just a little stand. I had I got a little pointed tip on there I came in here and kind of fiddled around down here Putting this in there ac across the cylinder not really the perfect setup, but it's gonna get me in the ballpark I zeroed out my zero and then I came in here and I looked for what to me looks like probably the deepest pit in here and measured it and it's about it's measuring about 20 thou deep so you know how much we're going to have to cut out i'm going to guess probably 25 30 thou off of each side uh, to get it to clean up which would put me about 100 120 thou uh, oversize uh, whenever or excuse me no not that it's going to put me about 50 to 60 thou maybe 70 thou oversize whenever um, we, we bore it out. So um, is that acceptable? Well, let's look at the specs and see what they say. So this is a page out of the all the specifications that I was provided and uh, the guys at Nashville Steam actually dug up some of the original documentations on this uh, Stoker engine. And uh, here we got, this is talking about the cylinders right here, the cylinder block. And uh, you can see here's the dimension A, seven inches is the drawing dimension. That is the dimension when it was new. Again, we're just a little bit over that. Um, down here, you know, it says when cylinders become worn, oversized rings should be applied. Oversized rings will be furnished in the following sizes, seven and one thirty second, seven and a sixteenth, and seven and one eighth inches. So they had plans that when as the cylinder walls wore you could basically put an oversized ring in up to seven and an eighth inches and down here it says when cylinders are worn to seven and one eighth inches they should be rebored and if worn beyond seven and three sixteenths they should be bored to seven and three eighths and a bushing applied to restore the cylinder back to its original size seven inches in diameter and it talked about you could order uh, cylinder bushings that were already uh, pre-machined uh, to go in here with an outside diameter of seven and seven sixteenths and uh, an inside diameter of seven inches. So bottom line, I think that we will be okay. We're basically, I think as long as we can keep it under this seven and one eighth inch size, um, we should be fine. Uh, you know, actually you can go up to seven and three sixteenths. And I, I think that when we bore this, we can get all that pitting out of there and still be under these dimensions that are in here. Of course, we won't know that until we get it over on the milling machine and, uh, and bore it out. But uh, I think we're going to be all right. Now, unfortunately, as far as I know, even though oversized rings were available back in the day, there, I, I doubt very seriously that there's any of that stuff still out there. So we'll probably have to make some oversized rings, uh, but th that shouldn't be too terrible of a thing to do. Uh, we should be able to machine some of those without any, any problem. They may not be exactly like the originals. Um, and let me show you what I mean. 
So this is the original piston, and you can see there's two bands in here. These are rings, and this is where they come together, and it's kind of got that little step over. This is one of the rings off of the um, uh, valve, and it's got the same type thing. So basically, this is a, I'm pretty sure this is cast iron. Most steam engine rings are cast iron, but uh, normally they just have a single line across there. These are kind of cool because they got that little step in there which actually helps to prevent the steam from escaping around that little joint. Uh, I don't know how I can cut that um, very easily. I don't know, we might be able to water jet or, or laser or something like that. I'll, I'll play into it, but normally you just machine the rings out of a piece of cast iron and, and just cut them there or fracture them there in a straight line and that's good enough. So anyway, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Uh, but I thought I'd show you that. It's a pretty neat little setup with that step in there. I like that. So a cylinder boring job is definitely in our future on this. And um, I think what I'm going to do, and I've already started the ball rolling on this, is um, I really don't have the right equipment in my shop to do this boring job and do it. I'm, I, I could probably get it done, but it'd be a little bit of a sketchy setup. So I've talked to my friend Brian Block. Brian's another YouTuber, lives up in the Kentucky area. And Brian actually has a big uh, horizontal boring mill. And I think it'd be the perfect uh, tool to really do this job right. And uh, we're trying to coordinate right now. And I, probably what I'll do is I'll make a trip up there sometime in the next uh, month or two and uh, spend a day or two with them and we'll get the job done and it'll make some good video content for both of us and every, it'll be a winner for everybody i think so anyway that's kind of my game plan i uh, don't know exactly when i'm going to be making that trip to kentucky but probably between now and the first of the year uh like i said i got to coordinate with brian look at my calendar look at his calendar and figure out when we can take a couple of days to to do that so that's the game plan there and but I'm really excited that uh, I think we can get away without having to sleeve this. I was really worried about having to make the new bushings, the sleeves, and put them in here. Uh, it was just going to be a little bit more extra work, but uh, hopefully we can get by without that. We'll know that once we get them bored and get a good measurement and see where we're at. The other thing I just want to mention here is that now that I've kind of got everything taken apart on this, Probably my next big step is going to be to start looking at all the parts, figure out what we can salvage, what's going to have to be remade. And I know there's going to be a lot of parts on this that have to be remade. Fortunately, I have the specifications. We have the actual manufacturer drawings for most of the stuff that has all the tolerances, all the dimensions, even most of them tell what material it's supposed to be made out of uh, and anything special about that part. So that's really good. Uh, again, I'm not used to having that kind of information when I'm working on something, so that's going to be a really big plus. Uh, several other YouTubers have approached me about helping out and maybe collaborating with this. So, uh, uh, I, again, I haven't had a chance to really figure out exactly what all needs to be done, but that's kind of my next big step on this, I think, is to really uh, get everything completely cleaned up and start doing some inspection and start coming up with a list of what needs to be made. And once I do that, uh, I'm going to reach out to several guys that have again expressed some interest and maybe get some people to help out with this project. I think that'd be a fun little thing to do and kind of spread the love around and get some other YouTubers involved with this project as well. So uh, that's kind of my game plan there. And uh, I know several of you guys may be watching this that have already contacted me. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting up with you soon uh, on some possible projects that we can share the load with. I do want to show this because this is probably my biggest concern on this whole project. Uh, most everything, I know we've got some fairly significant issues to deal with, but I've kind of got a game plan on most everything. And uh, we can either do it in-house or I've already talked to some folks that can help uh, do some various things to, to fix some, some of the issues that we got. But this crankshaft uh, has also got some pitting issues on it. So particularly this journal right here, this is the worst one. I don't know if you can see that in the video very well, but there was a, that's where the bearing was at and some water got down in there. This was the part that was down and over time it uh, eroded away 
at that journal. Um, I see they got a little bit of little bit of pitting on this eccentric here. Uh, that one's not bad. That one's not bad. Again, a little bit of pitting here, fairly light compared to this over here, and a little bit of pitting on this one. The other ones look decent. I don't know, maybe the tiny amount on that. So I'm going to have to find probably somebody that's set up to do crankshaft work. Um, I, you know, I could probably set this up on my lathe and offset my tail stocks, put it in a four jaw chuck. It's a lot of work and that is not an area that I'm very comfortable working in. I just haven't done this kind of work before and uh, I'd really rather get with a shop that's, that does crankshaft work uh, that can maybe help me fix all this. So I'm not sure if we just uh, grind it down and get it under the under the the pitting or whether we try to do like a spray weld build up or something in here and then machine it back down i want to talk with the crankshaft shop and let them tell me what they think the best uh, course of action is on how to repair that again i is outside of my wheelhouse i have never really done much of the automotive side of the machine shop world and even though this is a steam engine, it kind of still fits into that category. So I'm looking for somebody out there that this is a, an, an area of expertise for them that maybe can give me some advice or help or even do the project uh, for me. Uh, and we just, we got to figure out the details on it. So if anybody knows of anybody or anybody does this kind of work, uh, shoot me an email. Let's have a conversation because uh, uh, like I said, this is my, this is my area of, of where I'm not comfortable in this project right now. Well, guys, I think that's pretty much going to be a wrap on this one. I'm stoked that I've got this thing completely taken apart now, and we did not have any what I think is just unrepairable or undoable fixes to get this thing up and going. Um, you know, we got a lot of work to do, and uh, you just see some of the issues here. There's a whole bunch more stuff that we'll be just tackling one thing at a time, but... Um, I'm confident we can do this job. It's gonna take some help from some outside people, I think, but I'm confident that we can do this job. And I'm excited that it's, again, I got it apart and we didn't bust anything beyond repair. Uh, and you know, now, now we're ready for the real work to start. So anyway, that's gonna be a wrap, guys. As always, uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, leave me comments if you like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is going to be a long-term project. There's going to be a lot of work doing this, and we're going to be documenting pretty much all of it on tape for you guys to follow along with at home and see how we tackle some of these problems. And uh, so if, if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you're not already a subscriber, please do subscribe. Check back with us and follow along with the fun. And with that, guys, uh, we're going to sign off, and we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.